Hey, what's up guys? Sir Eminon here, bringing to you today a brand new video for this new September 2020 format. So, uh, when I looked at the ban list, I was kind of messing around with some decks, trying to see what I could come up with, um, because we're still in the process, for me personally at least, of reintegrating myself into the game, and obviously everyone is trying to scramble and find out what the best decks are, um, or what decks they want to play, at least, for the uh, this current format. Uh, so the ban list is legal as of today. So I wanted to play a deck with uh, the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. Uh, Bardish is one of my favorite Link monsters, possibly my favorite Link monster in the entire game. Uh, it's a very, very powerful card, of course, and uh, older viewers of mine, or viewers who have been around my channel for a while, um, definitely know that I stuck this thing in Lunalite uh, as much as I possibly could uh, until it got banned, of course. But yeah, despite uh, my most, I guess, competitively successful build being the Lunalite Orcus build, um, obviously having top YCS Niagara with it, uh, I did actually prefer the Rusty build just because, I don't know, I really like resolving it. It generates a lot of advantage. Uh, it's really, really cool to use with Xyz monsters, uh, which I won't be using as much in this deck, but I just think that the synergy it has with a lot of different strategies and just the value you can generate is uh, you know too much to pass up on. And is was the card uh, able to come back uh, relatively early. It's been over a year, true, but a lot of cards remain in the ban list much, much longer than that. So, um, is it ready to come back? Maybe. I'm not sure if for the overall health of the game it is uh, good enough to come back, or um, good is not the right word, but if it's able to come back, you guys know what I mean. But um, yeah, I think that, you know, the game is crazy enough. Maybe we could have Rusty in here, but uh, the card can enable really, really powerful plays. Um, so I wanted to pick a deck that I felt could utilize it pretty well at this current point in time. And I think that uh, Phantom Knights will obviously be a lot better once we get uh, Stained Greaves and the uh, the other guy that summons itself. Um, and it has level modulation and stuff um, in Phantom Rage. Uh, so I figured that I would play Goki uh, because I feel like Goki is a nice kind of mid-range deck where it's able to grind just because all the Gokis are floaters, obviously, and uh, has a fairly good combo potential. Um, given how we have a lot of new tools. Uh, and I did actually mess around with Goki earlier in the year, and I did quite enjoy that build. Uh, but this is quite substantially more co uh, combo-oriented. Um, so just go ahead and hop in. Enough of me talking. Um, so you notice I'm not on a uh, my you know regular Dueling Book account. This is just an alternate account. This is more of a throwaway just for me to kind of mess around with things that I recognize are probably worse than what people are going to be playing. Uh, this is no Dragon Link or uh, Dinosaur in for Noble Knight. Um, or a little itch or anything like that. Uh, it's definitely not up there on the tier list, but I figured I just want to have some fun. Uh, so we are going to be up against uh, Dogmatica Invoked here, and uh, we do end up going second, so uh, I do have a pretty decent hand here. Basically what you want to open is just any Goki plus any Extender. It doesn't have to be two Gokis, uh, so just as long as you have one Goki search, you can have the whole thing go. Uh, it is a little bit vulnerable to hand traps, uh, and obviously losing Call by the Grave did not help in that department. Um, so I am testing out things like Triple Tactics Talent to try and mitigate that. Um, but honestly, just having ways to reliably uh, keep going after you get like Ash or Imperm or Veiled on uh, Isolde's second effect, like that's obviously the biggest choke point. Um, so trying to just get past that is the central idea, at least. Like Ideally, your hand is like a Goki, a Warrior Extender, a way to play through a hand trap, and then a hand trap of your own. So I figure this is uh, a pretty reasonable hand. Um, for the most part, I would prefer if the way to play with your hand trap is a way to actually get another Goki back in the field so you can resolve Headbat afterward, um, since you're obviously doing the Headbat stuff once you initially search off your uh, Link Summon into his old in the first place. But um, yeah, maybe we can consider cards like World Legacy Succession. Obviously, I'm playing Monster Reborn and uh, Living Fossil. But uh, yeah, so he's going to start off with a Nadir Servant. Uh, he's going to send Wind Pegasus. And then grab Ecclesia. And then I'm going to Veil the Ecclesia. Uh, just because he normaled it. So I figured that he obviously doesn't have an Invoke to play if he started off with the Servant. Um, so I don't quite know what hybrid this is. It could actually also be uh, Eldritch technically. Um, but I did not quite know of that at the time. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty good pickup. It's Rota, it's any Goki. Um, so that's pretty good. Especially when I have uh, Suprix already. Fortunately, he does have There Can Be Only One, and that card pretty much single-handedly shuts down this deck. Uh, so it, it's going to give me a lot of problems, because it's like literally all Warriors and Hand Traps, and that's all the deck is. So we just attack over Ecclesia and pass. Uh, he goes for another Ecclesia, he grabs Punishment. 
Uh, one thing I probably should have been doing was just uh, not attacking into Ecclesia. Um, because, like, especially... It's easier to see it in hindsight, of course, but he's clearly on the invoked build. You guys see the invocation there. Um, and Alistair is, of course, a spellcaster. So um, just keeping the Ecclesia on the board makes it so that like he's not able to actually you know, go for any of his big pushes, like whether it's summoning another Ecclesia, which he had a second copy of, or another, or an Alistair. Um, so the better line to play probably would have been... I mean, I would have gone for the Suprix regardless, so it would have forced him to at least possibly go into the battle phase himself uh, to try and crash his own Ecclesia. Um, so at the very least, I'm getting a little bit of value there. But um, yeah, so drawing another tactics, uh, not super relevant right now, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I probably should just be like not bothering with killing his uh, Ecclesia. Because anytime he could just like top deck Alistair. And then he has a bunch of plays because uh, he can go into... He can go to Almirage, which is a Cybers, and then he can go to Mechaba, which is a machine. So um, those are all different types, and they operate pretty well under his Floodgate. But he goes ahead and punishments the Suprex, and then he enters my uh, Shade Brigandine. Uh, so yeah, I just go ahead and grab another Goki search. I should have searched, uh, I think I searched Octo there. I should have searched Guts, uh, and I realized this like the turn after, but I'm like, oh, wait, Guts actually can't be destroyed by Battle 1 in defense, um, which, you know, is generally not relevant, but uh, I guess here it was. Um, so yeah, I, I realized the turn afterward, and uh, had I had it the turn prior, it would have been fine, because I drew this Ash for turn, so if... Uh, if, if I had Guts on the field still, I could have at least tried to go for a Phoenix play. Uh, granted, he did have Imperm, but um, it would have at least allowed me to try and make try and make the push to begin with. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and attack Ecclesia. There's some lag there. And then uh, when Pegasus shovels it back, I misclick because, uh, you know, dueling book happens. <laughs> and then he does top deck the Alistair. So yeah, if I just left his uh, Ecclesia there, uh, he wouldn't be able to actually go into this. And uh, also his Gamma is off. Um, but yeah, he goes ahead and has Alistair, but he hard, draw the hard drew the Invocation, which, you know, the first rule of any Invoked player is whenever you stop the Alistair, they draw Invocation anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah. He realizes, like, I think, I believe he tries to go to Secure Gardener there, but Secure Gardener is also Cybers. Uh, so, yeah, we just go ahead and, um, you know, we both misclick around a bit, but, uh, Makaba hits the board. And the Tactics Talents has been pretty dead this whole time. Uh, just because he hasn't really been hand trapping me or putting up like a lot of monster effects during my turn. Uh, so I'm just going to take some damage here. Uh, and then here we go ahead and uh, yeah, set Guts, I believe. I, I could have also set Guts the previous turn where I summoned Twist Cobra, uh, and that would have been fine. Uh, the twist, twist Cobra shovel back, but uh, that would have also been okay. But yeah, now it's pretty hard. Because, um, like, I, granted, I could turn this into Link Rebo, and I believe I go for that later, uh, and then, like, summon a Goki and try and go for uh, Phoenix, but, um, yeah, like, I, I did this a bit too late, because now I have to contend with both uh, Mechaba and, like, whatever other interruptions he might have. So, I kind of let him draw his way into Alistair instead of, you know, instead of, like, making that play a bit sooner, which I could, definitely could have if I had searched Guts at the right time and actually set it. But yeah, uh, Pegasus gets in for some uh, piercing damage, but uh, it doesn't die. And then I draw the best card in my deck, so you guys, you guys can see where this deck is going. Um, but yeah, we go ahead and try and do the Link Favorite play that I brought up, uh, where we go and uh, try and make a Phoenix. But he has Imperm, and at this point, it's pretty much the writing on the wall. Um, I can't beat his uh, Alistair setups, so uh, we go ahead and lose that one. But the next games will showcase what exactly this deck is trying to do. So. Um, it's interesting because like he sides in reboot and cosmic, um, maybe suspecting that I'm on uh, Rusty. Uh, if he was, then that's a good call on him. Because um, uh, the only Phantom Knight card that I revealed, I believe, was Shade Brigandine, and that could be played just generally in Goki. So, um, but yeah, we go ahead, and this is essentially full combo, even though we drew uh, Red Ace Black Dragon. That's totally fine. Uh, we go ahead and get the searches. Obviously, you search Headbat and just a random Goki name off Isol that you're not gonna, or is old that you're not going to uh, utilize that term. And then go ahead and dump Phoenix Blade and grab a level 1 Goki. Um, and then this is the fifth summon. So even if they Nibiru you here, uh, they have to Nibiru you here because if not, you go into Appaloosa. Uh, which, um, spoiler alert, on this account, I forgot to put Appaloosa into the deck. Uh, but there definitely should be Appaloosa here. 
Um, but yeah, generally you're gonna go Appaloosa here. Uh, if they Nibiru you, then you grab Rematch and you grab another Goki, and then you have uh, enough materials to, depending on which Gokis you want to bring back. Um, like if you bring back Octa Stretch, you can make Link Rebirth with it, and then turn the other two into like a generic Link to Dark, and you can make Rusty. And then Rusty by itself also makes Dragoon because you get uh you get extenders to be able to go into um into Verte Anaconda, but you do have to play Link Spider if you do it that way. But yeah, yes, yeah. So I played Goki the Power World Ogre because I forgot to put an Appaloosa. I was like, oh, oh no, oops. Because I was like thinking as I was like quickly building it, I was too lazy to actually import the deck, uh, which is my own fault. But I was like, eh, I just feel like I can remember my own concepts uh, and generally I do but I was like something felt a little off and I was like eh, it probably won't matter but I was like oh it's Appaloosa which is like you know the biggest uh, insurance but granted most people besides Nibiru most hand traps would be dropped on his old days so it's totally okay um, this is as long as he didn't have specifically Nibiru so yeah we uh, rematched two Gokis and we go into the code breaker stuff this has become pretty uh, common and standard in Goki uh, because they are indeed warriors but also they're just a uh, you know, some of the best extenders if you are playing a heavy link based uh, strategy um, and gokis don't facilitate a whole lot of non link extra deck plays um, so we go into rusty some people uh have been turning things into like link frost and then like you, like I, you could turn like auto stretch into link reba link it away for the uh for the virus swordsman and then you can tribute one of the link frost tokens for uh, link rebo and then you can go uh, you can make plays from there uh but i just figured uh, I don't really want to waste a spot on Link Frost because it doesn't really do a whole lot in most cases. Um, it's just like extra value, like you can get an extra like maybe redoer or like an extra Link play. Um, but I, I figured it's not really that needed because um, like the uh, the Verity Anaconda setup is generally good enough. Uh, so yeah, we go ahead and make Dragoon obviously, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab a second copy of Fog Blade. Uh, and this should be Appaloosa, so in most cases this would be a 3 negate Appaloosa, uh, Dragoon, 2 Fog Blades, and uh, whatever other setup you might have, be it hand traps, actual traps, or you know, anything else. Uh, yeah, so it goes for a copy of Cosmic Cyclone. I decided to let it go through, it's just a 1 for 1, and I'm like, I really am pretty hesitant. Like, every time I have Dragoon, I'm hesitant to use it early, because my like, people could always just be baiting for better cards. Um, so I'm always like, I always keep that in mind. And here he drops Slumber, and I'm like, well, I could Ash the Slumber, or I could Dragoon the Slumber, or I could just let the Slumber resolve, since, uh, funnily enough, if this is Appaloosa, I'd be more pressured to negate the uh, Slumber here. Um, but because it's a Power Load Ogre, it's unaffected, so I'm like, eh, that's totally fine. I don't really care about losing Rusty, because I have all the PKs out of the deck anyway, and uh, Verte obviously doesn't do anything at this point. Um... So yeah, uh, he goes for Alistair next, and I decide to Ash that, um, because I want to reserve the Fall Blade for the Dogeron when he goes to Crash, because I don't want to use Dragoon here. Again, like I'm really, really hesitant to use, uh, to use Dragoon, just because like any spell or trap blowouts I want to save it for. Um, like maybe he has like an Adir Servant afterward, right? Um, so yeah, he drops a reboot on my uh, Fog Blade when I go to Fog Blade is Dogeron. Uh, which definitely was unfortunate. So he was able to actually successfully crash into Dragoon. And then he declares his ending battle phase, uh, but he tries to use evenly when he still has Alistair in the field, uh, and he forgot to crash it. Um, so yeah, that was a mistake on his part. But uh, it is all okay, because I think that I think even if the evenly resolved, uh, I would have had enough Gogi follow up because um, he didn't have a play afterward. So uh, next up, we got a uh, Feather Duster and Reboot, uh, some of the best side cards. And uh, some of you guys may have seen my tweet about uh, Feather Dustering Impairment Triple Strike, and uh, this is that game. Uh, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, uh, you guys can go ahead and do that. Links in the description, of course, as always. But along with all my other social medias, shameless plug. But anyways, he's gonna go ahead and uh, set rotation. So it gives me Mystic Mind, which is pretty interesting. Um, and he goes ahead and grabs a Meltdown. Um, so obviously he's going for the Invoked plays. Uh, I don't have any hand traps here. I figured that uh, because, you know, it's a Dogmatica hybrid that he's going to be more, like, back row oriented. Um, so yeah, I'm not as concerned about the Singular Macabre as I am about, like, the actual traps. 
and I saw they was playing like floodgates, like there can be only one and like impairment stuff. So I'm like, yeah, I really need to deal with those a lot better. All right, so I draw for turn, it's a boots, um, and I'm like, okay, actually, it's not that great because uh, it's hard to play through Makaba, um, depending on when he decides to use it. Like even if he uses it on Super, because it like basically ends my turn, right? So. I have to think. Like I, I activate mine to see if I can like maybe force the Makaba early if he has like a spell. Um, but he doesn't actually have it at this point. I'm like, all right. So I could theoretically go like Suprix summon, but like he could still negate it because then we'll have one monster each, um, and then like that won't really do anything. Or he could like let it resolve, but like then I'll be kind of playing uh, with more monsters for the most part. Uh, so I decided to just pass and wait for a better moment to try and make a play. He picks up a third copy of Strike, by the way. So he has three Strikes, and he has an Imperm. Um, so yeah, I pick up a Shaving Redeem, which is actually really useful. So my thought process here is like, okay, uh, I can break my own mind and have the Extender to play through the Makaba uh, both at the same time. So what I decided to do is I just uh, set the Shaving Redeem. He draws a Valor for turn. Um, it passes in the end phase. I go ahead and activate the Shaving Redeem, and then the Mind self destructs. That way, I can play during my own turn, unhindered under the Mystic Mind. And picking up the headbat here is actually pretty relevant. Um, it actually would have been a lot harder to make the play that I was about to make without this headbat. So um, in hindsight, maybe it was like more correct to uh, go for the Shade Brigadine play at a later point. But, um, you know, sometimes I, I felt confident enough with the reboot setup with a Feather Duster to answer like any like possible judgment or anything. Uh, but yeah, here is the moment where all the traps go bye bye. And yeah, uh, that is actually triple strike and imperm. So that was pretty funny. Uh, so yeah, all you have to do really is play through a Makaba, at least that I know of, um, and possible hand traps. Uh, I don't believe I saw any hand traps in the previous games. Um, so I decided like, to normal summon the Twist instead of normal summon the Suprix and using its effects, because again, if he for some reason decides to Makaba the Suprix, it actually ends my turn. Um, so I figured I want more Gokis on the field before I Link Summon so I can at least resolve one of the Goki effects. Because uh, if I can resolve one Goki effect, then I can go ahead and grab a rematch, and then a rematch will be able to recover from um, any possible like Macabre negations. Because here I'm expecting him to get uh, his old. Uh, and funnily enough, because I had a Shade Brigand Dean, I could just summon the boots. Uh, so here I go into Isold, and again, this literally just guarantees that I have uh, Goki's being resolved here. Um, so I chain block it in a way where uh, Isolde is chain like one, um, so that Macabre can't like negate its first effect and get it off the board. Um, but he actually drops a Valor, Valor on its first effect, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so I do get to resolve both my Gokis, and I'm like, well, since uh, he did it on the first effect, I can just go and make another Isolde. Um, so he had an extra interruption that would have possibly caused me to uh, not be able to extend past his board, but because he used Valor preemptively, uh, I was able to access another Isolde, which was uh, definitely a good way to force his Makaba. Um, so yeah. Uh, it would have followed up with a rematch, and of course, any two monsters on the field equals uh, Verte. So that is, you know, that, that's uh, pretty much that's pretty much how this game ends. So I'm able to pick one other rematch for next turn. I can't game him this turn, um, but I go ahead and just uh, fire off the the Red Ice Fusion stuff anyway. Um, and I considered going for a Rusty play because I could have gone. Um, you know, into again generic Dark Link two with like the twist and the shaving Dean, and it could have turned the Octo into Link Rebo. Uh, but then I would have had a trap in the grave, so I couldn't activate Shave Ring another copy of Shaving Dean that turn, and also already used boots, so I couldn't go into Verite afterwards. So this was, uh, in my view, the best play. Um, so we go ahead and make a Dragoon, and then we make a Phoenix or add back Phoenix Blade, and then we go ahead and declare it with popping his Bacaba, and uh, it goes against Scoops right there. I don't think that was game. No, that was uh, just 6k damage. Uh, but I had uh, Fog Blade because I had Silent Boots still in Grave. Uh, and then Reboot just that I didn't have to use. And then obviously Dragoon is just incredibly hard to out. So yeah, this is kind of just a testing like a proof of concept sort of build. Uh, it's not optimized by any means. Uh, but if you guys do want to see a deck profile of it, be sure to let me know. Uh, leave, leave a comment, uh, leave some likes in the video. Uh, 100 likes would be the goal. And if you guys want to see any other particular decks, definitely let me know as well. Uh, I might start back up the Road to 1000 Joel Book rating series. Uh, I personally think that I'm not actually that good at the game right now. Uh, so I am kind of just trying to meander my way back through. 
Um, so I figured just more laid back. Uh, this is still rated, uh, by the way, as you can see. Uh, my rating went up there. I don't know if I hovered it over at the beginning, but it was just 100. Um, but yeah, uh, playing on a throwaway account for some reason to me is like, I don't know. It's less pressure. I don't know. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comment section down below. Feel free to subscribe. Or feel free to join my YouTube. What am I saying? <laughs> feel free to join Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. Uh, all the links are in the description below. And uh, until next time, thank you guys again and peace.